Green curry is a sandwich, and to come up with that answer, I asked Ross Draws two questions. The first one was what his favorite food was. Hey, Chef PK, it's Ross Draws. One of my favorite foods is green curry with eggplant, so good luck. But to answer the question as to why green curry is a sandwich, we have to make the green curry first. We are going to make one of the best sandwiches of your life. This is coming from someone who actually doesn't care for eggplant that much. I'm using a big old honker of eggplant, and we just want to slice it into quarter inch thick slices. This is going to allow us to cook it later and keep the consistency that we really want for this sandwich. After everything is beautifully laid out and you don't have to do it this way, take all of your pieces of eggplant, place them onto a sheet tray, and this is when we're going to add some salt on top of them. Adding salt on top of the eggplant and letting them sit for about an hour to an hour and a half removes any excess moisture and will give you a better eggplant later. The next thing for our green curry is going to be our fresh carrots. I'm really only using about one whole carrot and then using a mandolin to get super thin slices. Remember, don't do it like I do and use a guard if you have one or just use your knife to get really nice carrot slices. The mandolin is an indis- Can you stop eating the prep? The mandolin is an indispensable tool and I love using it for applications like this. Just remember to do it safely. Once you have all of your carrots ready to go, you just need to place these to the side and those are done. Next up is some chicken breast. Now this can just be an eggplant green curry, but I also opted in to add some fresh chicken breast. You can also use some pork or beef if you really want to, but traditionally it would just be chicken breast, chicken thighs, or just the eggplant by itself. Now if you are using chicken breast, we do need to break it down into bite sized pieces, or in this case, bite-sized slices. Once you have your chicken breast sliced up, next we're going to use one half an onion. This is just going to give us a bunch of extra flavor in our green curry. Slices to where they're slightly thick. I don't know, you do you on that one. Now that we have most of our mise en place ready, it's time to actually make the curry before assembling the sandwich. And to make the green curry, I reached out to a great friend of mine who owns a Thai restaurant where her mom is the head chef. This is Chan. She owns Thai barbecue cuisine out here in the Northwest. She was kind enough to show me how to make green curry from scratch, and I was actually really, really taken aback by the simple ingredients that are used to make Thai green curry. From the fresh avocado, to the fish sauce, to the sugar, to a bit of chicken seasoning, some coconut milk, quite a bit of coconut milk, the green curry paste that's fried in oil to unleash all of those beautiful aromas, more coconut milk into that green curry with the oil, followed by just a bit of water to dilute it, and then this is something I didn't think was in green curry, but a bit of avocado blended with water. In true chef fashion, she did this so quickly I had to wash it a few times to really get the method down, but once everything came up to a simmer, she just portions out just a bit of the green curry, adds the vegetables and chicken, and she uses this green curry throughout the day and makes it fresh every single day. After everything is cooked together, you have your beautiful bowl of green curry, which she was absolutely nice enough to treat me to. I can't explain to you how happy I was to eat this. This is so good. How am I gonna make it better? tricks on you. We're not going to make it better. We're going to make it different. Starting off, we're going to take one whole avocado and only use half of the avocado and place it into your blender. To this, we're adding 250 milliliters worth of water and blending this until it comes out to this really beautiful paste. You want this to be super smooth. Yeah, see that? Ninja Turtle blood? Set it aside until you're ready to use it. Next is frying our green curry paste. I picked up a local green curry paste from Awajamaya, but feel free to use whatever green curry paste you want. Hit it with around 50 to 60 milliliters worth of oil and then fry it for about three to four minutes until you start to really smell that green curry come through. This is when we add one liter worth of coconut milk. I'm using full fat coconut milk, but really use whatever coconut milk you want. The other seasonings are gonna be 30 milliliters worth of fish sauce, followed by about 20 grams worth of chicken seasoning or chicken bouillon. Next is about 10 grams worth of sugar to sweeten it, followed by two or three kefir lime leaves. You wanna make sure that you split those leaves before placing them in to make sure you extract the most flavor. Hit it with a pinch of salt to taste, bring this up to a simmer, then add in your avocado puree, making sure you whisk constantly so it fully incorporates. I could drink this. <clears throat> oh yeah. Mm. <coughs> That's delicious. The second question I asked Ross was who his favorite anime character was, and this is why this is a sandwich. One of my favorite anime characters is Alphonse Elric from FMA Brotherhood. It seems like he's a soft kid with a hard exterior, and I can definitely relate to that. In Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, and this is spoilers for those of you who haven't seen it, Alphonse Elric's soul was trapped in a suit of armor. He didn't get his body back until the very last episode. In that episode, he was finally able to sit down at a restaurant and order a sandwich with a glass of milk, which is totally optional. This is why green curry is is a sandwich. Now to make our green curry sandwich, start off with a large saute pan with just a touch of oil. Place in around half of the onions that you had made because you probably don't need all of them. And we're going to saute these over a medium heat just until they're nicely softened, but not really caramelized. After a few minutes, throw it around 100 grams of the bamboo shoots and saute those together. <laughs> I'm really excited for this, if you cannot tell. What's happening? 
As you can see, Paul can't really figure out his life and how to eat onions, but once those onions and bamboo shoots are sauteed up and softened, place them on a plate and set them to the side. Now we need to sear off our eggplant, but make sure you take a paper towel and dab off any excess moisture that it extracted after we added our salt. We're going to sear these over a medium high heat, making sure we just get a bit of color on that eggplant. Make sure you do sear off both sides because, well, you're going to eat both sides, so you may as well sear off both sides. Once those are cooked and softened, place them on your plate with everything else and set that to the side. Next is sauteing up your carrots. Again, we only want to cook these until they're nicely softened. You don't really need to take these too far, otherwise it's going to turn into carrot mush and nobody wants carrot mush in their sandwich. Finally, we have our bit of avocado to finish off our sandwich. And the last thing we need to do is cook off our chicken so this way it's ready to go and plate up. Season this with salt and black pepper, and once you have it nicely seasoned, give it a flip after a few minutes and after it's seared on one side, and once you flip it, throw a lid on it to allow it to steam and finish cooking. Once it's finished cooking, place this on a plate just to cool down slightly. Boom. Chicken, done, let it rest. Like for like two to three minutes if you're assembling this. Now my bread of choice is milk bread or shokupan. It's a Japanese style sandwich bread, but feel free to use really whatever bread you want. I just feel like this goes the best with this application. Once you've toasted off both sides, take some of your chopped avocado, which I chopped off screen, you didn't really see, and turned it into a pseudo guacamole, making sure to spread out that avocado as evenly as possible. Next, start layering everything on top of that avocado. First up is your eggplant, followed by your onions and your bamboo shoots, and then your cooked carrots and finally your two giant honkers of chicken because it's Costco, followed by that second piece of bread and give this a nice press. Don't press this too hard, we're not trying to eject everything into the stratosphere. Now I'm going to let my sandwich rest for about one to two minutes and while it's resting, I'm going to plate up a beautiful bowl of our curry and then get ready to cut. At a diagonal, we'll do diagonal for you guys this time. In my food theory challenge video, I cut my sandwich in half versus at an angle, so this is for you. You ready for this cross section? This cross section is gonna be magical, isn't it? Oh, look at that cross section. This cross section is magical and deserves its own ride at Disneyland. That's pretty beautiful. That's pretty beautiful. Do you know what's also beautiful? Today's sponsor, Shaker and Spoon. Listen, I am no mixologist, and that's where Shaker and Spoon comes in. They have a team of mixologists that put together these really epic cocktail kits. Each monthly themed box contains three different cocktails and make a total of 12 drinks per box. This is the Summer of Scotch box, and yes, I understand it's October, but I'm trying to still live in the summer, okay? Let me have this. I love having fancy cocktails because they give me so many ideas on how to pair it with food, but I don't like making fancy cocktails because I'm just not good at it. This makes it easy. In this Summer of Scotch box, I was able to make all three cocktails in less than 10 minutes, and that was with me fumbling around to film this video. Not only that, but I actually felt super fancy using a cocktail shaker because I really don't ever use one. Being able to explore new flavors that I may have never had before is honestly the best part of this. My favorite cocktail from the summer of Scotchbox was the Como La Mujer because it reminded me of mango with tahini that I grew up eating in San Diego. Not only that, but as I was drinking it, I was like, this would go really well with vanilla ice cream. So now I'm going to be making this cocktail and then putting it into some vanilla ice cream and enjoying it. Make sure you check out the links below at shakerandspoon.com slash chef PK to get $20 off your first box. Yep. That's my favorite. This is this is the moment we've all been waiting for. Dipping a sandwich into green curry. That's just magical. Oh, uh, cheers. This is by far one of the best sandwiches I've ever made. I'm so glad food exists. Thank you to Ross Draws for the inspiration behind this. Thank you to Molly Tai for having me to teach me how to make green curry. Thank you to you guys for watching this video. Check out this video where I made a meal for a witcher. My name is Chef BK and remember, keep playing with your food.